Night has passed. Everything is ready for breakfast to come. In the forest, spider webs proliferate in the very few open spaces available, exactly in the path of small animals, exactly in the path of this little frog. At first, the Nephila seems confused by its prey's size and weight. The movements it detects tell the spider it's not a helpless insect. Better wait till its catch, whatever it is, gets tired. A few minutes later, the Nephila comes to collect its catch. There's no doubt the prey is tired. At first, it seems as if the frog has lost the battle. But the amphibian surprises its captor. Its skin is toxic. A shy bite unleashes an unforeseeable reaction. The spider moves away. If I can't eat the frog, then do I kill it? Do I kill it unnecessarily? Not even a spider will kill just for pleasure. The spider's choice is the natural one. If the prey isn't useful, set it free unharmed. The first time we saw these curious nests, we didn't pay much attention to them. There were so many of them. We thought they were the nests of some kind of caterpillar. How mistaken we were. They weren't some butterfly larvae. In fact, the thing looked more like a trap than a shelter. When we got nearer, we found some small spiders. But what we couldn't imagine what was hiding behind so many tangled threads. We've seen the tremendous effort that is the weaving of a web. Maybe that's the reason why this species shares the work among several individuals that build a huge social network to shelter the whole group. The result is not so well organized as the Nephila's web. In fact, we didn't think it was a very effective community. We decided to wait for nightfall in case the species would become more active when it's not so hot. And in fact, when the sun set, it unleashed the terror of one of the most hair-raising hunting machines that we have ever witnessed. One after another, moths and other insects fell into the trap. With almost no time to react, the mass immediately transported and devoured them. The hungriest individuals were always the first to approach each new prey. In that way, the community stomachs are always satisfied, and there's no need for the colony members to eat each other.
For a long time, it was thought that only insects associated with each other, and that certain arachnids only tolerated and did not attack each other in their first few days. The webs of many newborn spiders work in a social manner, and this may be the evolutionary explanation for the behavior of such an outstanding species. A species that has developed a democratic society, without castes or hierarchies. When the colony grows too large, some volunteers leave to start new settlements. In fact, Namibia's barren areas are plagued with this hair-raising species. A hunting net offers some undeniable advantages. As if to prove it, while we were trying to film a spider spinning a web, a little further from our lights, some strange movements told us that something was happening. We took the camera there quickly and found a large tarantula caught in the web of an orb spinner, a much smaller and weaker spider. But the tarantula had made its last and serious mistake. Its rival lives in a silky trap where you can't walk without getting stuck. The tarantula could not defend itself nor escape. With each movement, another of its legs ended up firmly bound to the web, and the thread's durability was greater than its strength. Each thread is made with a protein, speedroin, that gives silk its incredible strength. It's stronger than nylon or steel. In addition, these fibers can stretch to half their length without breaking. Such elasticity is basic to withstand impact and to neutralize prey. Between these two magnificent arachnids, it's a family affair. Although there's no doubt that one family has been more favored than the other in the evolutionary distribution of weapons. The avalanche of threads that literally wrapped the tarantula seemed out of proportion. The orb spinner was packing and preparing it for its storeroom. Spider webs have some bactericidal and fungicidal properties that preserve the prey, the food reserve, for several days even in strong sunlight. A bit like packages of food in the pantry. Ropes for nighttime hunting or daytime hunting. Nets for aerial hunting or sieves for hunting in water. Fish nets. A profitable system for catching fish is practiced by man since time immemorial. An invention that although similar to the spider web, is undoubtedly the work of a human being. Who but man could think of using it underwater? Who? Well, an insect. In the clear streams of almost all the planet, with a little patience, good eyesight, and a lot of luck, we can find a very interesting larva. The Friganias. The carnivorous Friganias. Unfortunately, underwater the minute crustaceans and insects on which they feed are really fast, especially when currents sweep them about. They are unreachable morsels for a larva of this size. Although they may lack agility, however, these insects have sharpened their wits to fill their stomachs. Once they have chosen the place, at the appropriate depth and in the right current, the show begins. The insect starts a mechanical head dance and sticks threads here and there to shape the trap. Such meticulous work continues for hours and the insect will improve it and add details in the following days. The important thing is to anchor the threads because water will sweep away a weak net. 
Finally, the trap is ready to filter out the prey. The problem is when a lazy individual takes a fancy to the work and tries to take advantage of it, wanting not only the excellent spot, but also the net itself. The winner hides at the end of the trap and develops the ultimate prerequisite that any good fisherman must have, patience.